Hey guys and welcome back to another vlog. I've just absolutely annihilated a cup of coffee and I had way too much syrup in it but hey, uh, it was syrupy but not overly syrupy. I'm sitting in my bed in my house coat. Some people call them dressing gowns, I call them house coats. And it is a Monday, I hope I'm in frame. I've had to rest my elbow on my knee because my arms are a bit sore because I am back from pole. I was going to start the vlog earlier um, when I got back from John's. It was his birthday yesterday so I was at his house at the weekend. But I just got distracted and I went to pole today and I didn't think I would be up to much. I've got a funny feeling you guys are looking at my nose. I'll move you back up again just in case. Uh, I didn't think I'd be up to much because I didn't sleep great last night and I've been quite tired today and I was falling asleep in the car and I'm like yeah and doing my warm-ups I felt really stiff but I learned a new move today and I am just so chuffed. Uh, that I can do this. <laughs> so it's called The Funky Monkey. No promises but maybe later on in this vlog I will show you it. Um, I'll try and describe it now. So if I do show it later on in the vlog try and remember this description because there's no way in the great cream puffs I'll be able to describe it to you while I'm doing it because um, it's quite contortionist and it's just new and I'm knackered doing it. So I showed you before the, the Gemini leg hang, which is when, depending what side of the pole you're at, but from when I do it, it's my left leg. So, my left leg, so where your knee is, underneath that bit there, I call that your knee pit. So from here on out, that's your knee pit. Your knee pit is curled around the pole. So your leg is like in an L shape, so your thigh being the the long bit of the L and then the knee down to your foot, the other bit of the L. I hope I'm describing this well. I don't think I am. <laughs> but basically, essentially, you're hugging the pole with your knee pit and you have to make sure that's a really, really, really tight grip. And then your other leg was just hanging off straight. So the funky monkey is when your left leg is still in that same position but you bring your right leg closer up to your chest so it's kind of out the way and then you slip your right arm underneath your right leg so that your right hand meets your left foot which is the leg that's curled round in the knee pit on the pole. Yeah, you see where I'm going already so you've got one hand off the pole because it's coming underneath your right leg to hold feet with your left leg and then your left hand goes out behind you and kind of goes behind your head and behind your back and grabs onto the pole behind your back and behind your head. So it's very contortionist. I've been practicing it a few times. I need to make sure that I get my leg, my leg grip really tight because if you don't, you're just not going to be able to get your foot and your hand meeting together. I think that's the bit I struggle with the most, getting my foot and my hand to meet together. So I'm wearing my house coat because I've got my pole stuff on underneath because every now and again I'll just hop on to the, the pole and have a practice. Hopefully I'll get a picture for later. But because it's taking me so long to get my hand and my foot to touch, I end up nearly Practically the top of my head is touching the bottom of the floor. So uh, yeah, hopefully in time I'll I'll speed up and I'll get a bit stronger. So I learned that today and I'm, oh, I just, I can't believe I can do it. I can't, I actually can't, I'm doing it and I'm like, I actually can't believe I can do this. Like, this is, this is mad. Uh, but I thought I'd do a weekly vlog this week. Because I've got a lot on. Um, tomorrow, <gasps> tomorrow. Can't promise how much I'll vlog. I will do my absolute best. I am going to a concert. I'm going to see if I can put you somewhere, guys, because my arm's really sore. If I stick you up here, I don't know if you can see me from there, or could you? Could you see me? I don't know. See, 
Hmm. Maybe I'll just, I'll just keep holding you. I'm scared that I'll keep talking and you won't see me. I'll be quick though. So tomorrow I have got a concert in Glasgow. Uh, John and I are going to the Ora Moor, which is a, a renovated church in Glasgow. It's where a lot of um, small, not businesses, small producers, not producers, trying to think of the word, like, you know, small stage shows and things like that happen. So I seen it advertised on Facebook and I was really excited. So it's a string quartet playing um, theme songs from all different animes. So the ones we know f uh, already are Attack on Titan, One Punch Man, Full Metal Alchemist, Demon Slayer. Uh, there was another one, I can't remember what it's called, but I read somewhere that they're going to be do because it says and more, so it doesn't give you the full list, but I swear I read somewhere online that they're doing Sailor Moon. I'm, I'm just really excited because I don't talk about anime too much on this channel, but I do love anime and I do want to talk more about it. So I was really pumped for that. And if John and I really, really enjoy it, there's another one later on this month and they're doing all the music from Halloween films. So you've got Edward Scissorhands, Psycho, eh, there was other ones but I can't remember. And me and John just think, how fantastic would that be to go and see Psycho performed in a string quartet? So you know, Psycho is that famous film. Uh, with the bath scene, you know, the, the lady's in the shower and she grabs the, the shower curtain and it pulls off the rails and she falls down and you see all the blood running down the bath. And, but it's the music, it's the ee, 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 on the violins and me and John are like, oh, that'd be fantastic to hear performed by a live orchestra, especially since it's a string quartet. So hopefully tomorrow, uh, if we really enjoy it, then he paid for the tickets this time, so I'll pay for the tickets next time, and I think that'd just be fantastic. So when we go tomorrow, uh, like I said, I don't know how much I can film. I don't know if you're allowed to film or not, so regardless, I'm not going to ask, because usually when you ask, even if you are, they'll say no. So what I'm going to do is when I film for the sighted people, and please remember this in case anyone's like, oh... The picture here is terrible! <laughs> For the sighty people, I'm gonna like point the camera down at like my shoe or my knee or just generally down at the floor. So it's not obvious that I'm filming, but you will hear everything. And I will try before the string quartet starts, because it's all candlelight and everything, I will try and get a quick sweep pan of the room to let you see it so you'll have an idea of what it looks like. Hello lovelies, it's Tuesday and it's 1.47pm. I didn't vlog anymore yesterday because I didn't do anything interesting. I was going to give you a little update on my angel wings plant, which I'll do in a momento, but um. Mum was down the stairs, she was doing research on it, I didn't know if she was in our onesie, I didn't want to pull out my camera and I got distracted. But um, yeah, today's the day where I go to the Ora Moor for my little uh, show, so I'm, I'm quite excited. I'm not, I'm just wearing a hoodie and jeans, but uh, later on I'm going to put on a nice bodysuit and a skirt. And I wasn't going to do makeup, but then I thought, nah, even though I'm only there for an hour, I just, I want to, I want to make a nice evening of it. I'm quite excited about it, and um, I can drink, but John can't because he's driving, so I think... I might have a wee drink. I might get myself a coke and rum because I love rum. And I've never tried a coke and rum. So make it that, make it something else. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Um so yeah, I'll do my hair later as well. And I, I washed it last night. And I also so I really like supporting small businesses. And you guys know how much I love Lush and Bath products. Uh, my love for Lush hasn't went away, it's still there, but I recently found a lady on Facebook, she's got a page called uh, Lindsay's Bubble and Fizz. If I can remember, I will uh, leave the link down in the description box. And she does like lives, I think every Thursday, and if, you know, she shows you all her, she has bath bombs, she has these things called... Uh, shower steamers. I'll talk more about them later because I've just placed an order for three big bath bombs and they just, they sound so cute 
and they, you know, it's right up my street. The scents uh, sound right up my street. Uh, they sound right up my street. So if it's as good as it sounds, I'll definitely be buying from her again. I did show my mum the live stream and some of the bath bombs she was showing and she did say they looked really good. So yeah, uh, fingers crossed I'll get them this week so you'll get to see them in this vlog. But let us go down and investigate um, my angel. So here she is, as you can see, or you can't, <laughs> she's quite like droopy and floppy which isn't the way she should be. So mum done a research on her. She's also manhandling the camera. Yeah. She's unable to tilt for some reason, right? I can tilt. Um, I just, see when you put the camera like that, I feel as if I'm filming that wall on the dog's well, bed. Well I can assure you you're not. Um, I need to adjust myself because that's not a no. comfortable position. Yeah, anyway. She's droopy and floppy and no, she's looking a bit sad and we didn't know why. Um, I only watered her once a week, sometimes even less, but it turns out, we old, she's a succulent. And if you don't know, succulents are supposed to get hardly any water, like, they're like in the cactus family. So even though I was watering her once a week, I was overwatering her. So I'm not going to touch her now, I'm going to leave her to do her thing. And they also really like sun. Haha, <laughs> in Scotland. So I've kept her down here just now to try and get as much natural daylight as possible. And she's perking up a little bit, but hopefully keep her down here for a few days and just don't give her water. Unless, it says unless the soil is like bone dry, it has to be like dry all the way through. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how she's doing. And my plants outside, I don't know how they are doing. Well, they're doing just hunky-dory. Are they? Because I don't go outside, especially because... Well, I don't know about anywhere else, but the weather in Scotland for the past week and a half has been wet, windy, cold, and I will not go outside unless I have to. But I'm going to... What? I can show you it just now. The plants? <laughs> Do I need to go hey, outside? No. All oh, right, okay, okay, that's fine. Then come along. Because I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go outside. It's wet and windy and bleh. Right. Right, you'll have to face it down the way. Down. And there she is, they are, they are, they are. They are, they're a collective species. Mm -hmm. So there they are doing, I don't, do they, do, they, do they look the same as they did when I planted them? I think they're getting a bit bigger. Oh, they're getting bigger, oh that's good then. Maybe when it's not damp and windy I'll go out and have a wee feel, but as of right now I am not interested in going outside. <laughs> but I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! Hopefully you can see me in the mirror, but this is me wearing my outfit. I've straightened my hair. I'm wearing my sailor my necklace, my bunny hoodie, and my pink skirt. And these are my boots on the floor. My, I'm not wearing them yet. Um, now, the next clip you'll probably see, remember, I said before I start, if I can get a shot of the overall room, I will do it. But if not, the next shot you'll probably see will be something like my foot or my knee because I'm going to keep my camera down at my side in case I'm not allowed to film but remember it is a concert it's all about the music so it's all about using these things in the side of your head so um, please, please don't be like why do we see your foot that's why hey guys it's Wednesday morning now I'm sitting on my bed I think it's like eight o'clock in my jammies because Wednesday means work so I like to get up nice and early I just wanted to come on and apologise for not filming anything yesterday. I've been really upset about it all night and even this morning I'm still really annoyed at myself. Um, I think John gets really nervous when I film and that makes me really nervous. So the whole way through the performance, I was just really, really nervous to do it. I didn't know if I'd be allowed to do it. And then I was really, I think, I think usually in these situations what helps is at the end of things I'm like, well, I probably wasn't allowed to film anyway, blah de blah de blah But at the very end, one of the performers said, you know, and if you took any pictures or you, you filmed any videos, be sure to tag us on Instagram. And I think it just... Yeah, it really, it really got to me and it, it really upset me. 
Um, I'm really, really sorry. But enough of the negatives. The night was absolutely lovely. So, um, it was, when I say reasonably quiet, it wasn't like dead. There was quite, there was a few bodies for it to be quite ambient, but there wasn't enough bodies for me to feel as if like I was packed in like a sardine. Uh, according to John, three and a half rows of people were full. Again, I think that's quite a nice number. Uh, because the performance is for over 18s, because there's drink being served, I'd say everyone there was probably around the age of 18 to hmm, maybe mid to late 30s. There was nobody there over 40s. And I'm, you know, I'm averaging that quite a lot. If I was to pull it back even further, I'd say 18 to probably 35. Could have been older, don't know. So it was really nice. I was in a room full of, like, people my own age, which was a great... Just really nice to be around and the performers as well were probably of that age too so it was it was really really nice um, and what made it even nicer is I just I felt at home I felt <laughs> with my own people when we were coming in to the building there was a girl behind me and when we were queuing at the bar she was like oh I just wanted to say I absolutely love your hair and I was like oh thank you and John said she had this bag which looked like um, a quality suite and I was like oh that sounds so cute and now I really want one and apparently she was Korean which was really nice but John was telling me there was a bunch of girls there with you know uh, I think that Korean girl had green hair but there was a bunch of girls there with like cut coloured hair and bows in their hair and lots of cutesy anime girls. It's funny John was saying it's all the cutesy anime girls and all the fat beard bearded nerdy boyfriends. <laughs> uh, but it was just really nice being in an environment with people exactly like you. You know most of the time I go through my day and sometimes I question my fashion choice. I'm like I'm a 26 year old female, am I too old to be wearing cutesy stuff, am I too old to be wearing bows and um, when I was in that environment it just reaffirmed my faith, you know, it's like no, you feel you're most comfortable when you wear cutesy clothes and bows and, and I know there's people my age out there that do it and tonight I was in like a room full of them in my own country so it was just it was just so refreshing. Uh, the music itself was absolutely great. They uh, played Attack and Titan 1 and 2, which is fantastic because I watched the anime earlier yesterday and the theme song had been stuck in my head, so I thoroughly enjoyed that. They played some songs from animes I've never heard of before, so they'll be good to check out. Um, John was delighted because at the very end they played a, a medley of Studio Ghibli. I need to watch more Studio Ghibli. The only Studio Ghibli film I've seen is Spirited Away, but I really do want to see Howl's Moving Castle. Um, they played Sailor Moon, which I was absolutely delighted about. <laughs> um, it's funny, you know you're a true anime geek when the, the performers were like great as well. They were full of energy. And after every song, they introduced the next song, but it was kind of like, so this is a 90s original classic, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon. So, you know, I knew straight away just from that, uh, but the whole night was really good. And hey guys, it's Wednesday night now. I just realised I was supposed to wash my hair and I didn't. Oh well, <laughs> it's Wednesday night now. Looks as if I haven't done anything today because I'm filming the exact same state I was in the last clip. Um, had work. What was good, it was fine. I haven't been in the best headspace today. Um, just, I'm not going to come on and say because it's a lot of personal stuff. And But I still like being real with you guys. I just haven't been feeling the best. I've I've been beating myself up a lot. Beating myself up a lot. Um, letting my disability get to me, feeling like a burden because I can't see M many, many things, some, yeah, some, so I, I won't, I won't try, it's, it's been bad to the point where I have to show you guys, um, my dad got me some sweets down in Tesco, he got me some jelly snakes, 
but the usual jelly snakes weren't there. I don't know if it's because of uh, the food shortages and everything in the shops, but I have been noticing when you go down to the shop, sometimes it's a hit and miss for things being there. And they weren't, you know, the jelly snakes weren't there. So what do most people do? They either just get a replacement or it's like, oh, they weren't there and they don't get it at all. But my dad went, apparently we have a pick and mix in our Tesco and I had no idea. So my dad went and got a huge bag of jelly snakes. And when I mean like, these are like the bad boys you get in the cinema. Wait till I pull one out. Like, look at that. No, is this a blue one? No, that doesn't smell blue. Is it weird that I smell them and I know what colour they are based on how they smell? Well, I think I do. It doesn't smell blue. But, you know, the huge, big boys. And you guys know, you know, they're heavy. They're not... They're not cheap. And when he gave them to me, I just burst out crying and I hugged him. Because, I don't know, I'm just... I'm just... I'm a, I'm a little bit sensitive today. Uh, so I didn't go to swimming either because I just wasn't in the right uh, headspace. But I'm I'm feeling okay. I'm I'm not a hundred percent, but I am I I am okay. Nothing that curing up in bed with a good cup of tea can't solve. And Mum says she wants to go out on Saturday uh, to go bed shopping because last Christmas I was going to get a new bed, but I didn't because COVID. In the shop shutting and I really want to go out to shops to feel the beds you can understand that being blind I don't want to buy a bed online because I don't I don't really know what it looks like because I can't feel it so I'd rather go and feel it so we're gonna go and bed shopping on Saturday which uh, I'll be really good hey guys it's Thursday and I'm filming from the same location again <laughs> please forgive me Um, I'm feeling a little bit better today Yesterday, well, you know how I was feeling. Sorry, I thought someone was coming in my room there. Um, today I feel a little bit better. I have a little bit more... It's funny when I say to people, like, I'm tired, and they think physical tired, and it's, like, mental tired. So it's like I have a little bit more mental energy. I still feel a bit discombobulated. That's a great word. To, yesterday I felt kind of numb, kind of sad. Today it's more like I can feel it more, so I'm not numb to it. It's like, it's so hard to explain. It's so hard to explain and do you know what? I'm very well aware that a lot of people probably come to my YouTube channel for escapism and not to sit in here about my mental health problems. So I, t I mean I could be wrong, if I am wrong let me know. Not that anybody usually does, but um, yeah, I'm not doing anything today as I said yesterday. Um, most likely just going to clean the bathroom, clean my room, and yeah, that's about it, which is fine with me. I'm actually letting my Sensi Bar harden because I'm going to put a new one in today. But unexpectedly for me, and Gia, my mum's friend, came to the house because my mum made a sensi order. I didn't. But she gave me, like, a few bits, which is, like, so nice. She's, su she's such a lovely lady. She is. So I thought I'd show you the few wee bits. Um, my Lindsay's Bubble and Fizz order still hasn't came. Uh, we have a Facebook chat and everybody's like, has anybody's parcels came yet? So they haven't came today, so... I'm fingers crossed they'll come tomorrow or Saturday. I've got a funny feeling they'll come tomorrow. But uh, we do have a wee something something to show you. Where did I put them? So, she got me a packet of uh, candy kittens. I don't know if that's the right way around. Just in case it's not. It's strawberry candy kittens. If you're vegan and you like, like jelly sugary sweets, then definitely check candy kittens out. They're a little bit on the pricier side because... Anything vegan is a little bit pricey, but they're really nice, and strawberry is my favourite. So that was really nice of her getting me sweets. She doesn't have to get me sweets. Like, these are nothing to do with Sensi, but she's just such a sweetheart. Oh, and she got me this Sensi bar. If anyone who's watching my channel and they wonder why I push my camera right down into whatever I'm showing you and then bring it back up, it's to make sure that things are in frame and the sighted people can see it. 
Um, so yeah, she got me a Sensi Bar. It's called Stargazer and it's like a really, really dark purple. And it smells super good. So I'll have a wee sniff of it again. Let's if I can do this with one hand. I'm going to make it my mission to get better at opening things or doing things with one hand. Although I'm saying that and I'm really struggling right now. Ugh, got it. Right. Right. I don't even know if I'm in frame. Okay. Mm, it smells really nice. So, goodness knows I, blah, 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 I'm talking too fast. Goodness knows if I was in frame there. Stargazer, it's... Uh, I don't know if I've said in my channel, I might have. I'm getting more into lavender scents. I still am a bit hesitant with pure lavender. But, kind of hybrid lavender scents, as I'm calling them. So, Lushy's Bath Bomb Twilight has a lavender tonka and lang lang in it. And it's a very sweet lavender and I love it. Well, it's the same for Stargazer. It's a very sweet lavender smell. It's it's even sweeter than uh, Twilight. It's like a tiny bit lavender and the rest of it's all sweet. So I'm really enjoying it. It smells super sweet, super nice, but it still has that kind of like sweet dreams nighttime effect. So I, I'm actually quite keen on using it. And I really like this bed frame, apparently, and I swear I don't just like it because it's pink, it's dark pink. But see the top of the bed frame? Mm -hmm. It feels like a, a seashell. See, well, ah, you're probably right. I really like that. Do you like it? I really do. Uh -huh. Did you feel down the bottom or along the sides? What, down here? Down the sides. Uh -huh. Like come right along underneath the mattress. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I and then you've got your wee gap underneath. I really like that one. That's my favourite so far. Right. I really like that. Good. Night night. Night. I want to see what this memory foam pillow right, looks okay like. Right, okay then. I've never felt a memory foam pillow. Right, okay then. Take a seat up on the mat. Are you sure I'm going to get up to No, see that wee mat that's at the pillows. Mm, right, there you course. go. I'm filming you now on your memory foam pillow. It's nice and comfy. Is it? It is because you the pillow because it's memory foam. Mm -hmm. You can proper like snuggle into it. It is. It's quite so we're in Monarch and right. First of all, first of all, this blanket is gold. It's so soft. And then if you go up to the top, look. Hopefully you can see it. There's a wee diamante glittery bit on it. I mean, if that's not princessy, I don't know what is. But apparently this blanket is. It's Rita Ora. Is it Rita Ora? It is Rita Ora. So it's, it's gorgeous, but it's like what, 129 quid? Um, look, what? I need to order a home bed, and here it's here. I've got the packaging. Ah, down a wee bit. So that comes with the blanket too. Is that the whole thing? So well, the you whole. You don't get that with the bed. No, I know you don't get it with the bed, but I mean, is that the whole thing? Like, if you were to buy that bed, and you'd get the blanket. And the, 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 the pillow covers are 34 pounds. Uh huh. The king size duty covers 105. Uh -huh. The throw is 120. Ah, uh, so you got 120. Right. Uh -huh. The cushions are 55. Uh -huh. And the champagne ones are 54. Uh -huh. And then see this bed frame. I, wait, I really like it. It's really velvety and it's a mint green. It would look amazing in my room just now, but I know my room is not always going to be mint green. And then I don't want to show. There's a bed over there, but I don't want to put my camera over there in case there's people. It's a sleigh bed. It's absolutely. You can see it now, just in case you couldn't see it. That's it. Hello, I'm now perched on the bed. Um, but yeah, there's a bed. Wait, over there. I don't know if it's in front of the bed over there, the sleigh bed. I'm going to see it. There's there's bits in between. Oh, there's bits in between apparently. Ha ha! Blind person filming. <laughs> This is the, the bed I really like. So it's a sleigh. It's a, the only thing is I don't like the colour because, let's face it, it's a very basic batch colour because it's that silver grey. But I really like it because it's a sleigh bed and I really like the frame. Yeah, I'm hoping you can get it in any colour and then see down the sides as well. You've got these studs, so it just feels like really royal and princessy. I really like it. 
I do like that one too. I like the mint green one as well, but I need to get it in a different colour. Mum might have found a sparkly... It's still, no, it's still £120. Why is it in the sale then? I don't know. <laughs> Up to 50% off bedding and throws, so they've maybe not just labelled it yet. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh well. It's down, down a bit. Down a bit? Down, down, yeah, down. That's down. Oh, my cane! <laughs> No, you what? Where it go? It's, it is, it is pretty. See if you can get that blanket in like um, a blue colour to go with my bed now, because I want my that my bed in sky blue, because sky blue is the colour. You could. That would actually be quite nice as well. Mm -hmm. That would be quite nice. Right. Guys, I'm back home now. I'm in the upstairs hall because my camera's charging. And if you can hear voices, it's just mum, dad and John down in the dining room. So I thought while well, he was distracted, I would take this time to uh, vlog. But um, it is Saturday, so I didn't film yesterday. I did nothing all day. And then we went to see John's friends and they've got a new dog as well. And it was, it was just really nice seeing them and going out. So that's all I did Friday. Um, bed chop was really good. That a last bed you would have seen in Monarch, you can get that in Sky Blue, and I absolutely adore it. The baby sleep bed. But my mum made the point of if I get a vibrant bed, I can't get vibrant bed sheets. But if I get a non-vibrant bed, I can get vibrant bed sheets. So now I'm very conflicted because it's like I don't want grey. I'm with with beige. Anyway, as I was saying before, I had to stop filming because my dad came up the stairs. Um, my Lindsay's Bubble and Fizz box came today and I actually, I was going to open it in camera. But I just opened it there and then because John was in the room with me and yeah. So I thought I'd come and show you and I am so thoroughly impressed. The box was packaged up lovely with packing peanuts and lovely lavender tissue paper and then I got three bath bombs. So I will show you them right now. So this is the first one. Make sure my charger is still on. This is a, a banana boba. So he is in banana form and he is supposed to look like a bubble tea so he's got a little face and everything apparently like there's a girl one as well that smells like winter fairy which is like their take of snow fairy which i will talk about in a minute because i have another bath bomb in that scent but he's really big like so for comparison this is my hand you know what they're really they're quite big bath bombs i didn't think they would be this big which is fantastic so he smells divine and then the next one. So I don't know if he's the right way around, but this is a dinosaur fossil. So this is actually the first one I added to my basket. And apparently, John says it's got like a wee, I don't know if it's a T Rex head or a T Rex body. But again, really big. It's like almost the same size as my hand. It's definitely bigger than my palm. Really big. And he's in the same blue raspberry and he smells beautiful. And then the last one, which is the first one I opened, which is the one I'm most impressed with. Like, just look at that. Look at, look at how huge it is. So it is a mermaid tail. It's so pretty. And it is, like, pretty much the same size as my hand. It's freaking huge. And she is in the same winter fairy and it is like snow fairy from lush but it's like a bit more bubble gummy like so a uh, snow fairy from lush is like creamy and sweet this is more like bubble like bubble gummy and sweet but creamy as well it's oh yeah so i will leave her details in the description down below but i'll definitely be getting more from her like oh my goodness like that's fantastic. I'm like right into my bath bombs and stuff right now. Me hey guys, it's Sunday now and I'm about to do something really sneaky. We are playing D&D down the stairs. It's John's campaign, so it's the... Uh, oh, uh, Stor Storm's King Thunder. And um, I know for a fact that people don't like me having the camera and everything because for some reason they think we have to be really theatrical and really, uh, like 
impressive with it even though I know most of the people that watch you my YouTube videos aren't D D players and if they are surely they can understand that you know my channel is not a D like I don't it's not strictly we play D D. So what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna let you sneakily hear some of it. So I'm gonna have to be really sneaky about it. So for you sighted people the visuals aren't gonna be really good. I'm gonna put my camera. I'm talking quietly. Sorry, I was talking quietly there because they stopped talking. I don't want them to hear me. I'm gonna put my camera on the ground. So you're probably gonna see like, I don't know, under the table or something like that. Um, Mum will probably know I'm filming because the camera will be on her side. She will not care. It's my dad and John that will care. So I'm gonna be really sneaky about this one. Hopefully I'm not a rogue. I'm a sorcerer on this campaign, but if I was a rogue, let's hope I roll an actual Wendy. Shh. went quiet. Okay, when I go down the stairs, I will have to the trickiest part is gonna be me walking in. I might have to pretend I'm cold and I may have to pretend I'm cold and wrap up in a blanket and wrap you in the blanket so yeah I think that's what I'm gonna have to do let's go no I'm just coming start getting the fish bowl ready as the husband will seemingly the husband will go and fetch the two pints so the handle will go over and you'll see just the normal pulling and you'll get the two pints off you and again not much of a head to them but they do look like very nice gold the fish roll however does seem to be taking a while because you see bottles getting poured <laughs> in whisked round and you do see her look at you and then she spits into it once why because it's part of the cocktail oh and you do see the water changing color oh as she starts to mix up so when she's finished it does seem to be a cloud cloud like a a sky blue, like cloudy sky. Oh, pretty! Uh, with that kind of like pearl swirl and stuff going around. And she gets like. She gets a garden trowel, what it what looks is like. She? And mixes it around. And as she leaves the trowel in it, you see like a small flower sticking out the trowel's handle. Oh, and cute. then it just kind of goes. Good luck. Uh, why? What's, what's in it? What did you do? Then she goes. That. And she actually points up to the bar. Behind the bar, there is a menu, you mm. know, just saying like local ales, international ales, all this kind of stuff. And they will give the three sizes and the three expenditures of drinks, and it will say, no questions asked, underneath. Why? I didn't read that. <laughs> you didn't ask? Oh well, I might as well just... So, you can go... Anyway. What clip there? It's me, my bracelet, I'm clicking it. No, it's me, my bracelet. Let's see if I can do the small. The door opens. Okay. As you open it, nothing seems to be there. Nothing's out there. There's no ginger cult. That's not a trace of if there's anything visible. Her name's Milky Way, yeah. Can Milky Way see anything? Can Milky Way see anything? Yeah. Your stomach, <laughs> your milk or weight smell in and goes down, does not doesn't see anything, but smells, yeah. smells something. What does she smell? Says it smells bad. Bad? She's only so clever. You're not going to get identification straight away and stuff like that. She says it Wait, smells... Wait, dead bad? So you're just like dead bad. So you, it's more like fusty, uh, mildewy, you know, but a smell that wasn't there before. It can be that specific, but it can't break it down that much for you. How do I... So is it a beastie? Is it a monster? We don't know. We don't know. I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to get it to come out, but if it's hiding, how do I get it to come out? Well, nothing really seems to be there, but you've just opened the door and mm. all you've got in front of you is a long, know. dark hall <clears> that you can, you can just... I've got, I've got light, I've got my cantrip light. You cast that on, so you've got dark vision anyway, do you not? Yeah, yeah you've got dark, I do. No, you can see to the end of the hallway. It's you know it's dark though. 
So remember, in dark vision, you see everything like a dog with colorblind vision. Everything's grey. Mm -hmm. You can see to the other end of the hallway, 60 feet to the end room, mm -hmm. the low end rooms, because you're in the high end rooms. You know that Foss and Ellis are, are to the rooms to the left and right of you. But all you know so far is that you heard a rattling at your door, a glimpse of red hair, but nothing else was there. What do you want to do? You can go down the stairs, you can listen to other rooms, you can go back inside and go back to bed. Uh, I, I want to see what it is. I want to I wanna mill around. You want to I think I'm going to use my arrow of slain. Is that better? No, that's for dragons. Should I use that then? Put your javelin away then. Aye. I use that. Okay. okay. So I just remember to pack it up. What? No, no. Keep it on. Aye, Turn it off. Oh, oh, you want me to keep it on? Yeah. Yeah. Just for just for your mum. Ah, that's better. Oh, sorry. What do I need to beat for Dex to take half damage? Each creature in line, excluding you and the target, must make a DC thirteen dexterity throw. Okay, I got fourteen. Do apologise. Okay. I'll take half damage. Taking so, four d six lightning damage. Okay, so I'll take half damage and lightning bolt. So roll to hit me with a spear, and it is a ranged attack, so that's your dex and proficiency. Oh my god, here it go. Oh no! So oh, that was a six, by the way. I just pulled so over. So six is nine. What's your dex? My dex is plus five. <clears throat> plus nine, so that's fifth. What fourteen? Yeah, wait a minute, there's something else, but I wrote it all down. No, no, that's it. Oh, is it? Yeah, just for the spear part of it. Ten for damage plus five, I Okay. The spear misses. Right. And she dodges the lightning bolt, but oh. she takes half damage from the lightning bolt. So roll the damage, it's like 4d10 or something, whatever it is. It is indeed. 4d10? Four, no, 4d6. 4d6, so roll 4d6, she'll take, take the half ten if you want. No, I'm okay. Half that, so I'll take six points of damage. Oh, this is going to be a fun fight. How? <laughs> uh, so I'll take that damage. That's. I think, I think that takes a full action to do that because you're throwing the spear, isn't it? So straight away, Pink, what's Pink doing? Oh, golly. You don't know what the spell's done. You just saw a green beam hitting your Leocrata and then. It seems a tiny bit sluggish, but you don't know what's happened to it. Because again, it can't communicate that directly to you. If it's a bit sluggish, then I don't want a running in. But you don't know that. Oh. You have to tell it what to do, basically. So you just... Or you, you would okay, just then it's just run in. So, attack. To take attack, yeah. So, your Leah Crotter runs in for the attack. I'm um, just probably the wrong thing to do, but... You can't make no, a game. I can't. I could probably better you than uh, I won't get its pounce thing, but because I won't get, but it honestly doesn't pounce thing. So it'll get a bite and a hoof. So roll to hit with both of them. Roll two d twenties. Oh my gosh! You can't read that. What was that? Two threes. Two threes. I'm really sorry. <laughs> yes. So a hunt and a whoop with the hoofs. Both miss completely. Cass, what are you doing? Who are you shooting? Are you shooting the one in the corner or the one that just came down the stairs? The one that came down the stairs. The one that came down the stairs. Yeah. Okay. So, what are you hitting her with? Um, remind me what I've got again. Sure thing. I've got Cass's character sheet on my pad right now. The one that came down the stairs is the one furthest away from you. That's fine. That's fine. She can move into space though. Right. And I've got all my so spells. So, you've got Polymorph, Blight, Fireball, Lightning Bolt, uh, Alter Self, Scorching Ray, Gust of Wind, Thunder Wave, Mage Armor, Chromatic Orb, Comprehend Languages, Detect Thoughts, Find Familiar, and all your cantrips. Do you think it'd be overkill if I'd done a Blight? You like, could do a Blight if you wanted. But... I, I hear a hesitation in your voice, no, but... No, you could do a Blight if you wanted, you just know... It's best against kind of planty creatures, but you could do a Blight if you wanted. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do a bite then. No, it's up to you. You don't know that. Uh, can I do a bite? Uh, no, I don't want to do a bite. I'll do a lightning bolt. A lightning bolt? Yeah, I don't want to do a bite. Okay, so You've made me thingy myself with it. No! If you want to do a bite, do a bite. Blight's no. still a great, strong spell and she seems to be a very scary bo monster. I'll do a lightning bolt. And then Are I you really I sure? Look, I, no, I don't want my tone to put you off. A okay. bite's still a good spell to use against her. Okay, I'll, use, I'll do a bite then. Okay. 
I'll let you move into position so you're going closer to the front door and you're like face to face, well not face, you know, direct line of sight with her, not face to face. Okay. You cast blight. I need to do a constitution saving throw. The last time I've done this it failed. I failed because I got a 5, although Yay! she gets plus... I get plus 3, so I got an 8, but it's like 15 I need to beat for you. So that's a fail. So get ready with your dice. How many? I'm going to double check for you. Is it D6s? It might be lots of D6s. Is it my dinosaurs? I think it's actually stronger than that. Oh! Remember, blights are really so I failed, so 8d8. Wow, I don't have 8d8. <laughs> Can I borrow some dice, please? Yeah, I've got... What are your spells on blight? Fourth. It's my most powerful spell after no, no. Uh, Polymer. Elizabeth, you suck at this. <laughs> what did you give me? I don't know. You I don't give you a D8. No, you gave her D10s. What did I do? I gave her a Right. Whoa. Hopefully the audio was okay as you were under my blanket. You might have noticed at one point John was like, what was that noise? And I was like, damn it. Um, yeah, I just gave you... If you're wondering why I was jumping from part to part, I wasn't filming constantly. I was just giving you a little snapshot. So right now we are fighting hags and she's just animated two tables and one of the tables attacking me. And after that blight spell, yeah, she doesn't like me. So um, yeah, I, I won't film too much more because I don't know what's more intense, this fight or the fact that I'm like filming secretly. Mum knows. Uh, John went out to get some painkillers because he's got a headache and his mum left. I showed her the camera under the blanket. So I'm putting you guys back up in my room before like John goes to hug me or something and, and feels it or what have you. But um, I will talk to you guys later and I'm going to go back to playing D&D &D now. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope the audio was okay. Fingers crossed.